Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 10 from the, um, well, this is actually from the textbook from Pure Mathematics P3 from International A-Level Edexcel. And this question here is a question in the exam practice exercise at the end. It's like a little, little exam that they give from the, from the whole of the syllabus. It's like a P3 practice exam they've given. And this is question number 10. Um, question number 10 relates to chapter um, 7, which is integration in the textbook. So I've saved this under that particular, uh, you know, um, category. And I'll also save it according to this particular paper. If anybody has any more questions from this practice paper, I'll also save it according to that. So question number 10 here says, integrate the following expressions with respect to x. By the way, the, the person asking actually asked for part b. But just to make it complete, I'll answer part A as well and uh, just give some idea. So here we have to integrate this expression with respect to x. So here we have a function inside a function. So with integration, especially with P3, we're not required to use substitution, although substitution is something we could use if we wanted to. But we're not required to use substitution. And in fact, if we can do something uh, like re uh, reverse the chain rule, that makes life a bit easier actually than substitution. Um, and reversing the chain rule is basically recognizing the results of substitution to be able to uh, answer the question in a quick way if it's of a certain form. And that form is that it should be of the form where you have a function inside another function. Okay, and if you recognize something which is the differential of what's inside the function multiplied by the original function itself, if you recognize something like this, then you you can be able to uh, what's the word reverse the chain rule okay so here what we notice is you have one times e to the power of 4x plus 3 and the differential of 4x plus 3 which is a function inside the function the main function is e to the power of something and inside it is 4x plus 3 if you differentiate 4x plus 3 you get 4 which is a constant and what's multiplying the whole function is also a constant so if you want to integrate e to the power of 4x plus 3 with respect to x, then what we do is we integrate the main function as it is. Okay, and the e to the power of something, when you integrate it or differentiate it, it just stays the same. It doesn't change at all. So you have e to the power of 4x plus 3 becomes e to the power of 4x plus 3. But then you always have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. Now what's inside the function? 4x plus 3. How do you differentiate 4x plus 3? Well, it becomes 4, so you have to divide by 4, and then you put your plus c. So your answer is a quarter e to the power of 4x plus 3 plus c. Okay, if you write it as e to the power of 4x plus 3 over 4 plus c, that's also fine. Don't forget the plus c. So that's how you integrate something when you can recognize the form that outside the function is something which is a differential of what's inside it. Now for part B, which is a question that was actually really asked by the student on the, on the channel. Um, you have cosine of 4x divided by e to the power of sine 4x. Now some people would say, oh, we can use lin because it's like a fraction. Well, you can only use lin if the numerator is of the form of the differential of the denominator. So for the numerator to be of the form of the differential of the denominator, you would have to have e to the power of something in there anyway. Right, you don't have e to the power of sine. It would have to be in the form e to the power of sine e to the power of sine four x. You have to be of that form, and this is of course, um, you know, the numerator is not the same as that. But what we can do here, if we can, use, we can still use recognition, uh, is by rewriting this as cosine of four x times e to the power of minus sine four x, because you have e to the power of, you know, e to the power of b. Uh, it is the same, same 1 over e to the power of b is the same as e to the power of negative b. We know that. So we can write this as e to the power of minus sine 4x. Now we have the situation where we have e to the power of something multiplied by the differential of that something. You have e to the power of some function of x, and outside it is the differential of that function. If you differentiate minus sine 4x, you get some something dealing with cosine 4x. So cosine 4x is of the form of the differential of sine 4x. Okay, if you differentiate sine 4x, you get cosine 4x. So you get something of the right form. It might not be the right sign. It might be not the. They might not have the right, uh, you know, coefficient. But 
the form is the same. Okay, as long as like in the last question, we we get um, you know if you differentiate four x four x plus three, you get a four. Here you have a one, but it's a constant. That's a constant. That's a constant. That's fine. They're of the same order, so we can proceed. So here we can proceed here also in the same way. So first, I'm going to write down the integral of cosine of four x times e to the power of negative sine four x. So if we think of this as the main function, inside the function is minus sine four x. And what we can do is we can differentiate the, mind from the main function. Now, the way I do this, I, I kind of maybe do this a uh, different way that you might see most people or the books do it. I write down this exactly as it is first. So I say cosine of 4x, and then I differentiate this. So it's e to the power of minus, uh, so I integrate this. Now, integrating e to the power of something stays the same. It doesn't change. So I integrate this, okay, um, just like I did before. I integrated this, but it just stays the same when you've got e to the power of something. But then you divide by the differential of what's inside the function. So the differential of minus sine 4x is minus 4 cosine 4x. When you differentiate sine 4x, you get cosine 4x. And then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 4. So when you differentiate minus sine 4x, you get minus 4 cosine 4x. Okay, so now we'll see that the cosine, and you got plus c, of course. The cosine 4x is get cancelled out, which should happen if we've done this properly as a reverse of the chain rule and you're left with minus a quarter e to the power of negative sine 4x plus c which you can write as e to the power of minus sine 4x over 4 plus c if you want both of them are fine okay so that's how you answer or tackle such a question you have to try to think of it as a function that a main function and what's inside that function differentiated is of the same order of what is multiplying the whole function. Okay, so that's how you deal with it. It can only work if it's multiplied with something which is the differential of what's inside the function of that same order. Okay, so there's the answer there for part B. I hope that was clear. Um, this is all about reversing the chain rule. Very important for P3. Um, other questions from this particular um, paper, if I answer other questions from it, I'll put in the playlist that will appear over here. At the end of this video, other questions from this um, topic of integration from P3, I'll put in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video here, which will tell you how to use my channel to find things that you, you might need to find and find useful. Thank you for watching. See you soon.